Hello everyone and welcome to our tutorial on APIs, JSON and XML. Here we're going to bundle three topics into one and we're basically just going to show you a series of slides, provide some information about these three topics and we'll take a look at a couple of examples of JSON and XML data as well. So for starters, what is an API? An API stands for an application programming interface and it's kind of a way to connect an application to a database. We can think about an API as being a bit of a, a like a messenger that communicates with the application and the database and runs data back and forth. So we can use this to upload data to a database or retrieve data from a database or maybe do some modifications as well. So the way in which we use APIs typically starts by specifying what kind of data we want with a URL. We use this to request data. So within a URL, we will put the parameters that we want and we'll use these parameters as a series of filters. For example, let's say we're retrieving stock data. Maybe we'll want a start and an end date. We'll obviously want the stock we're retrieving data from. We'll want maybe a limit, so maybe we want te the previous 10 days or the previous 20 days or something like that. Perhaps the type of data that we want back. Do we want XML data or do we want JSON data? And very often with most of the APIs I've used actually, um, I've had to create an account and there's some kind of a key that's associated with that. We'll be using a data set that doesn't need a key because it's going to be open source and that'll be easier for everyone. So once we specify what kind of data we want with a URL, again, it's just kind of a series of filters. Then we make a data request. We retrieve that data. And once we have that data set, we pass it. Now, the way in which we pass it depends on whether we have XML or JSON data. As you saw with a Beautiful Soup in the previous tutorials, assuming that you watched those, we pass some HTML data. Well, we're going to follow a very similar process, selecting the pieces of data we want, um, kind of sourcing them into variables and stuff like that. And then we can use those variables as we want in our application. So what about JSON? What's JSON? JSON stands for JavaScript Object Notation, and it's a way to store and transport data. So JSON files don't run. They're not like executable files. It's basically just a data set. And JSON acts like a big dictionary, or if you prefer the term map, but basically the same thing. It's a series of key value pairs where the keys are typically strings, and the values could be anything from objects to arrays to strings or other primitive values such as numbers or booleans or even null. Okay, So behind each object or each value there is a key and then there's that value there. So we can have nested objects, nested arrays, etc. We'll actually take a look at an example of JSON coming right up. Now JSON's excellent because it's very easy to read and write because again if we're good with dictionaries then we'll be very good at reading JSON data. Okay, before we launch into examples, let's quickly talk about XML so we can compare the two. XML stands for Extensible Markup Language. Note how XML is very similar to HTML, HTML's Hypertext Markup Language. And that's because the format of XML is actually very, very similar to HTML. It's another way to store and transport data, but whereas HTML focuses a lot on style and how to display data on your page, XML is not doing any of that. It's not doing any dis it's not doing any displaying, it's not running anything. It's basically just there to hold data. Okay? So we actually are not restricted to the tags like we have in HTML such as divs or paragraphs or headers and stuff like that. With XML we create custom tags and so can put whatever information we want within an XML tag header and then of course we'll have the actual text. So, like I said, there's no real style associated with XML. It's a pretty blunt and, quite frankly, a little bit ugly way of representing data, but it's also very useful and it's very efficient as well. So here we've just got a couple of examples. I'm actually going to break out of the PowerPoint here and we're going to take a look at these. So this one is an example of an API call that will retrieve some JSON data. So let's actually just, I'm just going to copy and paste it. Don't worry, you don't need to, um, you can just take a look at my screen as well. It's not like you need to actually copy and paste these and load them up also. Okay, so before we actually take a look at the data sets themselves, let's take a look at these URLs. So within this URL, we have the base API call. In this case, it's data.gld.gld 
www.gov.au, so it's the Australian uh, government website. When we call upon the API, we have an action that is going to be a data store search. So we're not pushing anything to the database or changing, we're simply retrieving. Now we're retrieving a specific resource and it's just based on this ID. I guess each of the resources in the Australian um, data, Australian government website um, or database are associated with an ID. So this is simply the ID of that one resource. Okay, and we're limiting this to five results, so hence limit five. This one defaults to returning JSON data as most of the APIs that I've used personally have returned JSON data by default. If we want XML data, we have to specify an extra parameter. Also, one other thing to note is that generally we'll have the query here with the question mark and then we'll have some, um, some identifier equals some value. So this is the parameter and then this is the value we're passing in again, parameter, and then equals the value. And then each of these separate parameters is separated by an ampersand. So um, if there were more parameters, more filters that we wanted to enter, we'd have to do and and then the other filters. This one's actually a little bit different because this one is returning XML data, but this is actually retrieving data from a slightly different part. Again, it's the Australian government, but it's not quite the same um, data set here. We're getting it. We're getting some air quality. We want XML. Okay, we have this category one and then region all. Okay, so these are our only parameters. Okay, so let's take a look first at the JSON one. And it's like this. So you know I said JSON is easy to read. This is not very nicely formatted, so I'm not expecting you to look at this and say, oh, I know exactly what's going on. Um, this is not very well formatted. I'll show you how to actually format it nicely. In fact, you know what, why don't we go ahead and do that now. Let's load up a JSON formatter and we're going to be able to see uh, that it's actually much easier to read. So usually I use this first one, the curiousconcept.com. I can actually take either the whole data set or I can copy the URL into here. And we're just going to go ahead and process that. Okay, so that's a little better. We can kind of start to see this, um, this dictionary-like structure. And here we have a key, help. We've got the actual URL, success, true, result, and here's is where it gets interesting. So we just have primitive values here, so string and Boolean value. Here we have the key result, and then the value is actually an entire object. So if we minimize that, we see that with these curly braces, we have a whole object here, okay? Within this object, there's lots of key value pairs. Key include total, true, we get a resource ID, and fields, here we have a key, of fields, and the value is an array. Now this is actually an array of JSON objects. Again, an object is with these curly braces here. And each of these objects has a type and an ID. Okay. So I'm not going to go through the entire data set, but basically what we're really interested in in this particular data set is going to be the records. So we've got ID, site, seconds, date, time, water level, prediction, and residual. And I think this is some kind of atmospheric data. Um, so that's uh, that's what's going on here. So if you want to give this a look through, then that's totally cool. Otherwise, we're going to head on over to the XML data. And so this is what an XML data set might look like. Right off the bat, if you've seen HTML before, and I'm assuming you have, then this will look very similar to that. Okay, so we can close the entire thing up. But basically, we have tags. Okay, so here's the start tag, air data. Okay, and the end tag, and then of course all the content in between. So within this, you'll note there aren't headings like paragraph or div or anything like that, but there are these custom headings. So we've got uh, this air data tag, we've got a country, Australia, state, Queensland, provider, um, department, environment, and uh, heritage protection. And within this, we have category, region, and then this is where we have all of our actual um, interesting data. Okay, so you can actually see a mix of these tags, these um, attributes. We can kind of think about these being attributes, name, air quality, and also the actual values within these tags. So we saw that when we closed this guy up, the entire value of this, or what we would consider in HTML to be the text, is whatever, between, whatever is between the tags. In this case, it's just a bunch more XML. Perhaps if we go into one of these and take a look at the actual value stored here, it will make a little bit more sense. 
Okay, so that's XML for you. Hopefully you can see the big differences between JSON data and XML. And no, these aren't the same data sets. These are two very different data sets. But it's more the difference in the way they're formatted that I wanted to point out to you guys. So whereas JSON is all separated into these nice key value pairs, as you can see here, XML is a little bit, well, it's a little bit messier. But it's also a great way of storing and transporting data. So throughout this tutorial, we're going to show you how to read and write, or how to um, retrieve and read both of these types of data sets, as it's important to know both of them. Now, I think we'll start with JSON because it's a little easier. Like I said, if you're, if you're good with working with dictionaries in Python, JSON is also a breeze. The only difference is the way we retrieve the data. And then other than that, it's just working with key value pairs. OK, so that's going to be our first task. Once we're comfortable with everything to do with JSON, retrieving the data or making the URL API cool, retrieving the data, passing the data and writing to a CSV, then we can finish up with XML and we'll be basically performing the same tasks in that section. Okay, so thanks for watching. We'll see you guys in the first JSON section.